Daily Show. And, you know, I'm really excited to talk about this guest because this is the time that we need to talk about this further. You know, uh, my uh, my guest is author John Pavlovitz. Uh, John, thanks for stopping by. And, you know, when you talk about what's happening in the world today, a book like yours is needed, isn't it? Mm, I, I think so, man. It's a time of... Uh... We're not being real nice to one another. So uh, that's kind of the heart of the book is needing some compassion and uh, try to figure out a better way forward. So let's kind of jump right quick in and talk about specifically enough um, why you wrote the book. Well, you know, doing the work I do, I travel all around the country, uh, talk to people and just I'm getting the exhaustion that people are feeling. And it's really about the relational fractures. You know, there's the political situation, there's theological differences, but it really comes down to our relationships and where they're breaking down because of the tribalism that we're all experiencing, the urgency we've been immersed in. And so it's really been about just writing something for people to uh you know, encourage them where they are in their journey. Absolutely. So let's kind of um, jump further into this process of, what um, you know, what you're seeing, what your hope is this book will get people to start to do it more. Yeah, I think, you know, it's trying to figure out what's the balance between our relationships and our convictions. There are times when those things don't match up and how do we know when to fight for people that are close to us and how do we know when to lean into our values and sometimes to the detriment of those relationships. So it's really trying to figure out how can we be our most authentic selves and yet not uh, completely cut ties with people who we may have great differences in with. Yeah, and so the, the, that's the problem. We don't wanna have dialogues. Democrats and Republicans don't wanna have dialogue. Uh, Christians and Muslims don't want to have dialogue. Some, right? Mm -hmm. Some uh, different religious faiths, different beliefs, different mindsets, but we don't want to love each other. And that's a mistake. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because, you know, this we're, we're stories and we're living in systems and the stories, we really need to respect those to be curious about other people. I think we've lost that because we, because of the way that their political situation is set up, I think that tribalism is inherent. And so we're, we, we want to get pulled into those opposite poles, but I think there's a, a vast humane middle of whatever that theological political who would want to communicate and navigate their differences. And so we just have to keep being relentless in doing that. Be relentless. And that, and what give some tips for our listeners and viewers out there, how we can start to love and, and, or at least care for other people that don't have our same beliefs. Well, I think it's really, comes down to respecting the journey of another person that everyone's road is really complex that we are all a product of our stories that we have families we were raised in and churches we were a part of and life experiences so none of us comes to our politics or our theological conclusions haphazardly and so we need to try and be curious about the other and respect their journey and their road even if we don't agree with their you know their convictions or where they stand today it's realizing that they're they're not a stereotype they're not a caricature and that no group is a monolith and so we want to see the individual as much as we're able to i think that's where the hope has to be all right. Let, now, thinking about what I, the challenges I go through is I want to let this platform, the Neil Haley show, any of the podcasts I produce to have a voice, regardless of what that voice is. Everyone needs to have their say mm -hmm. and other people want to censor people that have different beliefs, censor different situations. It's just not a way to get us to meet at a table to get along because we're uh, this world's a melting pot and we have to get along mm. or we're going to have a war beyond wars. Yeah. You know, we talk a lot about civil war. That's sort of the, the language. And I think we're, you know, it's more of a relational cold war that we're entering into because really no matter what happens in November, you know, these fractures are still going to be there. All the differences are still going to be there. Only one group's going to feel emboldened and the other's going to feel really, you know, disheartened. So 
the things we're talking about are going to transcend a political situation, even though they will be exacerbated uh, to some degree. But there, yeah, the hope is we are tethered together, you know, whether we want to be or not. And we are, you know, all in one interdependent community. And so we have to figure out how to make this work. All right. So let's kind of jump into specifically making it work. What will be a recommendation? Because I know you're going out and traveling across the country to yeah. if you have somebody you don't believe in their values, you don't believe in their specific things. How can you have a cordial conversation and still be an, be an American citizen and everyone's American citizen or anyone that is in this country to be treating fairly, even if you don't agree with them? Yeah, I think it's it, the, the difficult part is, is trying to get outside of our our bubble, our tribe of affinity, because once we can get outside there and have substantive conversations, we're going to realize, all right, we may have been misinformed about the other, or we may have had false perceptions. And ultimately, I think it's about getting to the, the fear at the heart of everything. I tell people, look for the fears and false stories, because whenever you're engaging with someone on immigration or healthcare or gun violence, there's a fear at play. And so it's trying to understand what the other is afraid of and then either give them better information or try to help them be less terrified because no one is at their best when they're terrified. And I think religion and politics at their worst leverage fear, phobia, prejudice. No, they definitely do. Yeah. And uh, should we talk to our politicians about getting along too and not name calling? Because if they see their, that the politicians are doing it, what do you think's going to happen? Yeah, Neil, I mean, it's like that we, we have always been looking to our leaders in the past for sort of model some of these things because, you know, 20, 30 years ago, our parties had you know, differences as much as they have now, but they were able to sort of navigate them and, and work for the common good. And I think we have to pressure our elected leaders to do the work that we have placed them in the position to do, which is work for the betterment of everyone. And there's just not a lot of that happening. All right. And uh, your hope is then what do you do, not just the book to help others deal with these things? Yeah, I think it's about getting having the messy conversations. You know, we can't really we can't really shout at people from a distance. We have to get some sort of proximity because that proximity is going to help us see better. So it's about whether in our churches or in our politics, in our neighborhoods, trying to figure out ways to curate, you know, rational conversations where people are coming together in a posture of curiosity, not to debate, but to understand. And so whatever way we can do that individually with our social media, in our relationships, our circles of influence, and then in the, the collectives that we're part of. All right. Fantastic. The uh, best place people can find information on you and learn more about you. Where can they go? You can go, uh, well, Pavlovitz, P-A-V-L-O-V-I-T-Z is my last name. There's not a lot of John Pavlovitzes. You can find me on all social media and connect with me on Substack and all that good stuff. And any and uh, the book's available all places, right? People can check it yeah, out. Yeah, anywhere you get books, you can get them. So I, I'd encourage people to check them out. And if they're interested to give it a try. But John, the thing, the big thing is, man, that we have to start to do this or yeah. we're going to have difficulties with our neighbors, with our family, because we're going to be divided and we can't be yeah. divided anymore. And you're doing something yeah. important to go out there and talk about it because no one wants to be the peacemaker. They all think fighting mm -hmm. and saying bad words is the only way to go. Right. And the, and the book, you know, fighting for means sometimes it's the other is worth fighting for. It's our collective, our nation. And you're right. This culture of cruelty, it's not sustainable. And so we've got to figure out a better way. Yeah, all right. No Thanks again, John. Appreciate it, sir. All right. Peace. All right. Thanks. Take care. You're listening and watching the Neil Haley show. And we'll be back in just a moment.